there. For today's page, I have a couple of photos that I want to scrap, and I'm going to be working with um, Little Yellow Bicycle's Fern and Forest collection, the girl version, and I have um, several of the 12 by 12 papers, but I also have the 6 by 6 paper pad for this, and um, the way these come is they're loose in a pack. Uh, so they're not in, in a pad like like a lot of the 6 by 6s but the paper is really good, heavy quality. It is double-sided, and you get two of everything. Um, and what I like about the 6 by 6s is it seems like, you know, there's a great, there's some great journaling blocks here. Um, there are also some really cute little images that you can cut up in small uh, versions. There's one, I really want to use one of the fairies. There's a couple of different ones in here. I haven't decided for sure which one, but I know I want to use that on my page. So there's some there's some great things to go along with the um, uh, the 12 by 12, and one of the reasons I picked this collection to begin with is the the purple color. Um, it's a little more of a magenta kind of color, but still it's very hard to find anything that comes anywhere close to purple in scrapbooking. So that's why I ordered this. But I love the B sides of these papers. Really, really very versatile uh, papers. There's even this one has kind of this beige on one side. So you've, you've really got a lot that you can work with. Now my sketch I'm going to put my two photos in the middle, and I'll be using one of the 12 by 12 papers for the background, but I'll also need to cut one down for this um, uh, portion in the center as a mat for the photos and a place for my title to rest. Then I'll be using some of the smaller pieces in other places around the layout, and then for these flowers. Um, I want to create some images here, and that's another thing that the small paper pads are great for, is these really dainty little uh, papers that you can cut up into flowers or whatever shapes that you want to cut up. So that's um, kind of what I have planned. I have a lot of lettering pulled out because the title's long. Uh, there's, this is one of those things where the title and the pictures kind of say it all uh, in terms of the story, so I need quite a bit of titling to get my long title in. I, I want to definitely work in these um, glitter thickers, the purple ones, and then I've got just lots of other possible lettering to use. And there'll probably be some buttons and other things on there as we go along. So the first thing to do was to figure out which of the 12 by 12 papers that I wanted to use for the background and for that mat in the middle of the layout. And I'm just laying the photos on lots of different papers. I really like this one that sort of leaves or feathers or whatever they are uh, in the green and um, aqua there. And I thought I would use maybe some of the pink or, or a solid green with it, but I really liked this wood grain. It gives quite a bit of contrast. And as I mentioned earlier, I have a long title, so I'm using a lot of letters, and those purple letters would really pop on that. So I think that it would work very well uh, as one of the papers. Now I'm measuring to see how big. I do a two to one scale on my um, uh, sketches. So I just measured to see how large to cut that, and I believe it was an 8-inch square. And the reason, I, I obviously I need to know how to cut it, but also the back side of that wood grain has that little, one of the fairies on there, and I don't want to end up using it. I want to save that. So I cut out the um, wood grain so that the fairy was saved. And I also have one on a 6 by 6 and I'm just deciding which one I like. Um, they're both really cute. I think the one on the wood grain, the back side of the wood grain, is actually the prettiest one. However, when I, and that's what I thought I would use, and when I laid it down here though, it was so big. It was almost as large as the people in the pictures, and so it didn't look like a cute little fairy anymore. It just looked too large. So then I went back to the 6x6, six six, and that's the one that I uh, ended up deciding to use. Now one of the other things that I wanted to do um, is the stripe paper. There's a 6x6 six six stripe paper that I, I preferred to use because it's such a, a lovely delicate paper. 
and I'm looking to see where I want to trim it so that I can match up the design and it will look like a whole piece. If you're going to piece anything, a stripe is definitely the best thing to piece. It's, it, you won't see the seam in a stripe like you will in any other paper. Same concept as fabric. You can seam stripes and, and you just you don't know it. So I'll put these two together right up against each other and then I'll have a nice board, continuous border there and the design just continues on across. So with some of those things down and my words, I think I'd like to have a border around that mat. Um, some stitching would I think look nice for this kind of little more delicate layout. I have the paper piercing pack from Stampin' Up, sometimes that's hard to say, paper piercing pack, and I'm going to use that straight edge there just uh, as to line up the one row of little holes against the edge of my paper and then punch the other little row of holes and then I'll use those as my stitching lines. And I'll continue on up and when I get to the corner um, I've got to kind of work my way around because I rounded this corner if you're going to punch holes, that may not always be the best thing, but I, I wanted a little bit softer look here, so I rounded the corners, and I'm just working my way around, and I continue on doing that. I'm sorry that ended up a little bit off camera, but as you see, I'm just I'm uh, going to go around that corner, and I'm trying out some different threads here, various colors that are in or are going to be in the layout, purples and pinks and they didn't really work all that well. So I went to get my white thread to see how it would look, and that's what I decided would look the best. Now, next to, um, it says Daddy's Little Girl is having a little, and at the time I did this layout, we didn't know whether it was a boy or a girl. So I'm putting a blank here, and I'm gonna do the blank and stitching, and I'm just marking uh, points for that, and I'm gonna use one of the colors for that to make it show up a little bit more. So to do my stitching, I pull the thread through one of the holes and tape it on the back. Don't you wish you could have done that to fabric? It makes such a nice smooth edge. <laughs> and then you just keep on, you know, making a running stitch. And you could go over it twice if you wanted to. You could even mix colors. We're just doing a simple stitch, and I go all the way around. Now, this the little fairy that I chose, I turned her into a tag and she's got little stars coming out from her so I've, I'm taking some of these Studio Calico wood veneer stars and I want to add some color to them. I especially want some white ones but I also have some markers here. Uh, these are water-based markers from Stamping Up. You could do this with Copics too I believe. And I'm uh, adhering the, the stars down to um, some scrap cardstock so they won't go all over the place when I'm trying to color them. A white gel pen is a good way to get white stars. It worked really well. It needs a little bit of time to dry, just like it does on anything else. And then I've also got these, um, as I say, the water-based markers. The wood grain kind of shows through them, so they look really nice when they're colored. But the color doesn't always look like it does on the cap. It might be a little darker or a little bit different shade when it's applied to that wood veneer. If you don't like it on one side, you can just flip it over and use the other side. So there's my stars, and I did color a bunch of those that I'll be putting on the layout towards the end. I've got my journaling typed on one of the 6x6 six six sheets that had some lines on it, and I have a couple of other patterns that uh, I want to tuck behind the mat in the middle. These are patterns that in 12x12 12 12 would be way too large. But in 6x6, six six, I can put uh, little bits of them in there and add some additional color without taking away from the rest of the page. And I had to trim them down there some on the sides because they were bumping into the glue behind the or adhesive behind the mat. Alright, and now it's time to look at my flower garden in the lower left hand corner. I have these stick pens from an older little yellow bicycle collection and I think that the I needed a way to attach them to the layout and I decided that the packaging was actually the best way. And I have these words that were one of the 6x6 six six pages. Well, again, when you shrink them down you can do a little more with them. So I'm taking some of the packaging and trimming that off. And I'm using my craft and rubber scissors from Stampin' Up. The Tim Holtz scissors would work really well for this. 
or, or pretty much any scissors. It just you need something that will cut through that foam. It's not too hard to cut. Um, and I'm going to glue those words on the front and I'm going to play around with which um, stick pins I want to put in there. I know I want to use some of those pinkish colored hearts. Those are perfect. A lot of times manufacturers collections from one to another will have uh, similar colors and similar shades so you can mix them up. I think that's great. So I'm trying to decide what to to make for flowers and there are some great big flowers on my 12 by 12 paper there but again the 6 by 6 works out really nicely because I can cut down some of these very small circular flowers and I'm just cutting these out by hand since they're kind of a wonky shape anyway and I'm going to glue those on to the stick pens. I glue all this eventually with um, oh, a hot melt glue. Okay. And I also have some punches. This is the Boho Blossoms punch from Stampin' Up. Any kind of flower punch would create these. And again working out of the 6x6 pad because those papers uh, have such pretty small prints. And I'm just punching out a bunch of different flowers. I'm going to use some here, and then I'm going to also use some up at the top of the layout next to that tag. I've got some buttons and things. I decided to mat the words. I thought they needed something they, uh, to kind of finish them off there. Now this is kind of getting ready to go on the layout. And I have to make sure that I push my stick pins in enough so they don't cover up the words. So it's just a matter of figuring out which little flowers are going to look good where. And I'm going to tuck a few around the pictures and again up at the top just kind of seeing what I like. This is a fun part I think of a layout. Of figuring out these last few little details sort of bring everything together. Now it's time to sprinkle on the stars. There's the little fairy sprinkling stardust down on our new mom. Page with the flowers glued on. I attached this with hot glue and the same thing for these little flowers and then the rest of them I just used uh, glue dots to add a few more up here to kind of carry that across and then I sprinkled the stars down um, just placing them and I glue those on with um, uh, Ranger's Glossy Accents that works really well for those little small embellishments like that. And I have this blank down here. Daddy's little girl is having a little we don't know whether it's boy or girl. And I asked my husband if I should put a question mark there, and he suggested doing a blue question mark and a pink question mark, which I thought was really, really cute. So um, that's our page, and sticking pretty closely to the sketch. With um, you know, my original plan, I thought I would have uh, flowers here with stems and stuff, but I really liked these um, stick pins and, and uh, found a way to incorporate those. So. Um, anyway, there's my page. Uh, please check out my blog and um, thank you for watching.